Chris McCoskey from Emerging Civil War, and I'm on the top of Sitlington's Hill on the McDowell Battlefield. What a hike to get here, about a mile incline to get to the top. Uh, a little bit of a field on the top here, but not really a great panoramic view as I was hoping. I'll uh, wave the camera around here and let you see. The battle took place on May 8th, 1862, as the opening engagement of what became known as Stonewall Jackson's Valley Campaign. And we can debate later whether you want to include Kernstown in the Valley Campaign or not. Here's a Civil War Trails marker on the top of the hill. It shows you where we're at. If we pan out a little bit, you can kind of see uh, down in that direction would be the direction the Federals came from. The little village of McDowell is off in that direction right there. Jackson marched out from Stanton, Virginia, joined up with Edward Allegheny Johnson's division, then continued on to McDowell to intercept advancing Federals under the command of Robert Milroy and Robert Schenck. Jackson perched atop this mountain and dared the federal forces to attack him, and of course they did. And after uh, several determined attempts, though, the Federals could not drive Jackson away. And you can see this is a spot high, a piece of high ground that I'm on here. McLean's Federal Brigade is going to try a couple different approaches up against this spot, and that'll keep the Confederates here busy. As they were attacked both from that direction and from that direction, uh, repulsing attacks from two uh, oncoming federal columns, holding a piece of high ground, able to, to drive them off and sort of remain as the linchpin of the uh, Confederate position, even as Confederate reinforcements started coming in from that direction behind me. The cool thing about this battlefield is that almost the whole thing has essentially been preserved by the American Battlefield Trust, the Shenandoah Valley Battlefields Association, and other groups. More than 580 acres. It's fantastic. So you really get to see it, much as it was back in 1862. There is a small pull-off of the battlefield along Route 250 as it heads down off the mountain toward McDowell. If you st stop here in this little parking area, you'll see a couple signs. That I've been eclipsing with my body and then a little trail there that heads off into the woods. It's about a mile to the top of the mountain. A strenuous uphill climb pretty much the whole way. The terrain on the battlefield is absolutely brutal to be honest. Uh, the mountainside's not only steep but there are a lot of deep tumultuous ravines that soldiers from both sides had to descend and climb to actually get into the fighting. Along with the trek to the top of the mountain, visitors can see some sights in the village of McDowell itself, including the house where Milroy and later Jackson made their headquarters, as well as some markers and monuments. One thing that has made the trip to McDowell completely worthwhile, and the orientation's been fantastic, have been all the Civil War trail signs that are out here. I'm here on Cemetery Hill, where the first Ohio battery was uh, positioned trying to lob shells up under the Confederate position up in the hill behind me. It was way too far away and the elevation way too high for the artillery fire to be effective. Um, but I tell you, the Civil War trail signs are. It is a long hike to get to McDowell, but the drive is beautiful. It's out of the way, but it's a must for any Stonewall Jackson fan. For Emerging Civil War, I'm Chris Mikowski.